on day and I'm starting with some raw wood. So this was a project my dad and I just finished. It's all raw wood. And I'm gonna show you what I do to maybe age it. And I used all the scraps from our fence, but come on in. in San Diego and um, it's Kari with Kari Caldwell Studios. You can find me on Facebook, you can find me on YouTube, you can find me on Instagram, but I know I've been very, very quiet for the last three or four months with this whole different world that we're living in. But come on in. Um, today we're going to use the vintage wood. I'm going to start off by showing you an application of how to use the vintage wood and then I'm going to kind of go over about uh, why I'm obsessed with wood and reactive stains and some really pretty finish that you can create. So first we're going to start with this cabinet that a client brought in and it's already painted on that side and I just gave it a little sand down um, on the back so I can see what how this reactive stain is going to um, react with this wood which I don't even know what it is but I do know what the other wood is so we're just having fun and, and um, the, what I usually do is call these like experiments or learning lessons um, because if you don't play with anything you can't figure out if you'll ever be able to use it. So first of all, there's really no odor. I wish you could smell. It's very watery. It's not like stain. It actually goes in on raw wood only and reacts to the tannins and then changes it a color. The beauty of it is you can do these dripples and this will make some interesting marks because they'll puddle. And then I'll just go ahead and lay it all out. Um, and this is why you need your experimenting time so you can figure out what's gonna work for you and um, why it would work for you. And when would you be able to use this um, technique? So I'm not sure how many of the other gals you've seen on the paint-a-thon this morning. Um, thanks for putting this on, Miss Howard. Um, so anyway, right now, let's just have a quick look in here while I let it dry. You can see where I initially dripped the stain and it gave an interesting look. So we'll see how this uh, reacts up. So meanwhile, what we're gonna do, like I said, I don't, mean, I don't know what kind of wood this is because it was just in my studio, but I have some other woods in here. Um, this is an oak. And this is a oak, and then I got that finish on it. So I'm going to show you that. This is precast kind of molded wood. Um, this is a gorgeous finish. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, this is the fencing that I've used on my fence. And look at how pretty the reactive stain is happening there. But I already want to show you why I'm obsessed. Look at how cool this is already looking. So fortunately, I have a lot of opportunities to work with cabinet makers and I, I build kitchens out with builders and I get to spec the woods and stuff. And I'm totally obsessing. I want you to come look at this picture right now. I'm totally obsessing on like a raw wood look with a white upper cabinetry. And I'm designing for a client and dude, this, already is knocking my socks off so I'll just have to figure out what kind of wood that is which I can with my cabinet maker because I don't keep all the stuff in my head I just don't keep all the stuff in my head I just create and um, I also have this this just came in this morning too this is grade A poplar and I'm going to do a finish on this and I'm going to do the samples out of the weathered of the better with age on her poplar because then I can do a really cool finish on it and I don't necessarily want to start with raw. The other ways you can use it is if you have some stuff, like I found this mirror in a trash and I was like, I'll take it. And I'm really digging like the restoration hardware look. So all I'm gonna do is take my palm sander and just sand it down real quick and get to this raw wood because the only way the, the better with age works is when it's natural wood. So
So the oak piece that I've showed you over here, it did have a huge finish on it and I cut it off and I just sanded it down. So when you're working in these solid hard woods, you can sand off the finish if you feel extra <laughs> because it's a lot of work to get to the raw because this is, it only works with raw wood. So that's what you have to keep in mind. Remember, it only works with raw wood. So let's go ahead and stain up a little bit more. But oh, how pretty is this already? <laughs> this is not years. It takes minutes. And I have this amazing breeze in my studio, so it's drying really nicely. So um, your method of application is just with a chip brush. You can um, huddle it in places if you like to get that extra. You can also, which we're going to do, that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to stain this and then I'm going to show you what you can do. Uh, I'm going to do this so I can show you how to finish it off. I'm talking really fast because I want to get so much done in 20 minutes. Um, I want to show you how to put the wax on because you can just leave it like this. Teddy, I'm going to ask you to move. <laughs> Teddy, over here, I'm dog feeding. Ted, thank you. Amy has a great suggestion saying how you can even thin it down and get two different colors that way. Amy, I was yeah. that way with this, girl. <laughs> I'm right there with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I can add water to it to thin it down. And we're going to do a little gradation scale on this piece of uh, grade A poplar. I don't know what nice. it'll look like, but that's the beauty of it. So like I said, I'm just really obsessed with wood right now. So I want to um, play with all the ways that you can do it. So here I just went ahead and put it on with a chip brush. It's like water, it's just gonna sit there and it's gonna get just busy doing its thing. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take like Amy suggested, which I wanted to do anyway, <laughs> um, and I'm gonna start off with full concentrate. So we're gonna go full concentrate, chip brush, put it on. This would be a great time to just understand that you can flick things around and play with it that way. So I will take a little Dixie cup. I'm just gonna be free here. Okay, so I have a Dixie cup with full strength and I know I can see the line in there. I'm gonna pour it in and then I'm gonna put, you could start off, I would start off half water or quarter water. Let's just start off quarter water add it to, stir that around, and then we'll, um, I'll just keep the brush. I could go to a new brush if I want to be a purist, but I'm really not. I think anything that looks good, you just kind of come in and just do it. So now I'm taking the same board with uh, a quarter water added to it. I'm gonna do a, a little strip there. Then I'm gonna add some more water to it another quarter, so that would be a half, and add water. I love how easy this is. Uh, that's the whole thing. So the, easy, the ease of it, and then what you actually get out of it is just insane. <laughs> and that's my kind of work. Look like awesome sauce without <laughs> the, so much effort. So now the poplar is not going to really have high tannins. So maybe I'm gonna go, so now I have one half water to full strength. Um, I'm gonna do it on my oak piece now. Because the oak that I sh have a sample here with you is full strength. So let's let that oak sit up. Oh, nice. Well, this will age to a grayer version, but here we should totally start getting a little different. Um, I also did it on mahogany. And mahogany has a, a lot of mahogany and purple in it so it almost goes to a black but the beauty of it is it's so much nicer than a heavy body stain teddy I know he just wants cuddle um, it's better than a heavy body stain so you just get I don't know, it's just something yummy so that's why I love playing with it so mahogany I'm gonna try the mahogany with 50% less strength because we'll see how dark that gets so we'll let that busy dry. This is just um, the outer board from the fence that I made. So 
right now my fence just feels really fresh and it's all just cedar but I, I'm kind of wanting to go here and just make it look a little bit more vintage and if I even wanted it just a little lighter just so it doesn't look like hello I'm brand new and I don't have to wait one year for it to weather mm -hmm. I can just simply put it on and it weathers it right now so the reactive to the vintage wood, vintage wood, better with age, is only with the tannins. So it's nothing that can go over a painted surface or something that has a finish on it. But if you get good quality woods and you, like I said, you feel very extra and you want to sand it down or pay for somebody to sand it down, or if you're like myself where I have the ability to have my custom cabinets made or I work with a woodworker or things like that, then this is a way to use the better with age. Um, so this is busy doing something. We can always put a little blow dryer on it. This one is drying up really pretty, a nice gray. And then I'm just gonna hit it with the blow dryer for a few minutes because I wanna work into the wax. So. Time. Pardon me? Time. Oh, we're looking at the time. Yeah, we have plenty. We have nine minutes. <laughs> My camera girl's asking me about, about time. So I'm just hitting the blow dryer like we all do, watching paint dry. <laughs> and see in those special spots. They're asking the types of dogs. Is it a cabochon? No, I just, we got to say hello. This is Teddy. He's a golden doodle and that's Max and he's a Shih Tzu. And they match and they match me perfectly. <laughs> and they're beautiful, gorgeous <laughs> dogs. And I'm thinking about getting a puppy myself after being home for how many months by myself? <laughs> Too long. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's time. Okay, for the sake of time, we're gonna kind of rush this. I'm gonna just do a little edge. Do you guys have any questions on the on the better with age? What's going on and why am I playing with it? I do want to get to this one because this what this is the you could do this on chair legs, sand chair legs very easily. You could do, uh, like if you're lucky like me, I'm building stuff. I'm building a little small house so I get to do my own cabinets. And like I said, I'm obsessed with like a raw wood and white uppers. Um, maybe you have a fence that you need to age. Maybe you found a piece of wood out of the trash like I have. Maybe mm -hmm. it's gonna be a perfect base just to get me started on this piece here because she gave me this duck. And, um, you know, I don't want a heavy body stain, so maybe if I water down the better with age, I can um, create the finish. So this is, these are the things they just say, Kari, paint this like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> how? I have to figure it out. So that's why I play with all this stuff, and I make it an experience for myself, and I make this a, uh, a task. You know, now I've learned, I, I, even if it's not the right finish for that piece or a certain thing, then I have more knowledge in my head. And that's what I really like. Okay, so we're gonna kind of finish up with putting some wax on. So here is, and wax, you guys, is a perfectly fine top coat, so don't overthink it, promise? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can, there's a beautiful sheen to this. I can even buff this up some more. And it has a gorgeous sheen level on there. And there's nothing wrong. That's a completely finished mm. piece of furniture. Nice. So this is the oak stained, full strength, half strength, still busy drying. This has wax on it. This is still busy drying, but it's turning out cool. And this has wax on it. And I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna use the liming wax. The liming or the ceruzine wax are basically the same thing, so feel free to get either. <clears throat> Next, for that really cool look, I'm just gonna take a little bit of my wax. I usually have something to offload it on, and I'm just gonna come in with my chip brush, whatever method I like. Use your own um, 
intuition to figure out sometimes how you want to put things on. So now the waxing will give me, uh, it will whiten it, it'll give it the extra texture and a protection. And so we already are establishing a little different, a little mm -hmm. more youth, youth uniformity. Um, it can go heavier. We can go heavier with our wax. Great comments, how people are saying it's so interesting to see how the stain reacts with the different tannins and now the wax and it really brings out the patina and it just really creates such a variety of looks. It's beautiful. It is. It's really amazing. So I'm going to hit this one more time with the blow dryer so I can show you how to wax for a carved piece, which will be super fun and we can finish up in four minutes with that. So sometimes like in our test runs, you know, we work through things faster, we can come back to it. I'm lucky like people give me all kinds of moldings, all kinds of samples. I always have stuff in my studio prepared and ready. In a perfect world, I probably wouldn't go this fast over my um, better with age. I would wait a little bit, but I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna just show you like just putting the wax in and I can double wax this side, that's not a problem too. And that would give me another experiment of what I might want to do. And I really kind of want that wax down in those crevices. And there's some other products out of Amy Howard at home that I would probably throw in here too. Um, like some, possibly some uh, dust of the ages or something. And you can see how then the wax just starts to alter the look here too. I could come back and double stain this too and go a little darker, see where it puddled there. Um, but overall, this is a very good version to even show a client because they could say, well, can I have it a little lighter? And you're like, yeah, I could do it a little lighter. Um, so that's why we go through these experiments to figure out our roadmap to where we wanna go. So this is the same piece of wood just a little less stain applied, a little less wax, and you can see the variations, and then you capture the part that you like the most to do the finish on the whole piece. And like I said, right now I'm really obsessing, not necessarily with this tone, but yes, this tone, but not all in my of my spaces would handle this tone, but this with white upper cabinets would be thebomb.com. Did we still say that? <laughs> <laughs> and this is the poplar, which is not, really killing it in any way. Yet, now I get something. There's definitely some tonal variation there. Okay, so, but this is very good because, look you guys, then when I do the paint finish over this, I've killed the wood just enough to be able to leave some halos or some gather some, um, you know, without just obliterating it with straight paint. I can have some gaps in the paint and the stain. And that is enough difference to warm it all up. And I could double stain it and play with the stains more. So that's my goal of doing that there. And then I'll see what happens on this guy. Even if I do sand them all down and repaint them, it'll be pretty cool. So with all of that, better with age, Vintage wood, better with age, and liming wax are two groovy products to have. <laughs> they make me happy. They make me have fun. And um, like I said, you can find me over at Kari Caldwell Studios, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. And thanks, Amy Howard, for hosting a paint a thon. Peace out. <laughs>